Welcome. It's another Friday, and we're here on the Murfreesboro Live Show. We are here today with uh, special guest Pete Dowdy of the Rutherford Reader. And with that, I'll pass it to John Gessler, who will be interviewing Pete today. Good morning. This is John Gessler with Murfreesboro Live. We'll be interviewing, as promised uh, last week, with Pete Dowdy with the Rutherford Reader, also owner of Eagle Times. Uh, good morning, Pete. Good morning, John. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Uh, what I'd like to do, of course, is talk about what we did last week in that uh, the, talk about your paper, talk about what's in it today, talk about how long you've uh, been in the paper business or reporting, and then maybe some of the things that are coming up that's for the Eagleville area. But in, with that, for that really to happen, I guess part of it is we're going to need, you. of course, we talked about last week, you sued the county. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what precipitated that, where we are now, and where it hopes to be? Yes, John. Uh, we decided uh, oh, about a year ago, a year or two ago, that we the only uh, uh, recourse that we had left was to sue the county, and it's on and because of legal notices, public notices. Uh, in 06, we applied, and at the time you had to go through the uh, state attorney general's office uh, to get a favorable opinion or uh, whatever they wanted to uh, uh, share that you were a general uh, paper general uh, circulation or you weren't. And so anyway, we have been, since 06, we've been turned down three different times. And after the last one, the Attorney General's office has uh, bowed out of uh, issuing uh, any kind of opinion to newspapers for the purpose of running legal notices. So. After that, we figured that, okay, there's nobody in the state that uh, you have to go to, and if you meet the criteria, which is pretty simple, print once a week, be a paper of general circulation, and be a paper of uh, general interest, that we should have no problem. Now, excuse me. Now, yeah. do they have, when they say general circulation, do they have a number that it has to go out, like a, a minimum number that's printed? No. So no. there's no minimum. No, there is there is no minimums, and it's probably just as well because papers that uh, that had a larger circulation, say a few years ago, or twenty years ago, or ten years ago, uh, newspaper circulation has has uh, been dropping, and so that would affect uh, uh, who could run and who couldn't run. So it's you know. I guess that's why they use the word general. Because I was curious, because of course when I was growing up, I was a paper boy. Yeah. And everybody got the paper, and there was almost a lot of the boys, and my dad had a paper out too when he was younger. Right. So I didn't know if that had anything to do with their criteria. But no. No, there's there's, there's two different uh, categories. If you are a uh, paper, say like the local daily, uh, you have subscribers and you have a, uh, a postal permit, uh, second class permit, then what you have, what the rule is in order to get uh, uh, notices on uh, elections, you have to have
are running uh, legal notices and they do not have an opinion from anybody. And I've talked to these publishers and they just said, hey, run them. Well, it's easy for them to say uh, because I can't get the uh, county clerk's office to uh, include us in, in the choices. And now the paper was served, I guess this is the second week since the county was notified. What are what's going now in the in the lawsuit? Where are you? What do you expect? How long does it take? Well, the uh, it was supposed to go before uh, Chancellor Corley. Uh, his term is up, or he's retiring, and so he has recused himself uh, for this particular case. Now, what we have to do is wait for his uh, replacement. Uh, to be seated, which is next month, and from what I understand is that the uh, county then, uh, or the court, somebody has 30 days to, uh, to respond to this court order. So somebody's going to have to make the decision one way or the other, uh, I'd say by, by the end of September. Okay, and then as the traffic rolls by, as if, assuming the uh, the court sides with you, then when would you expect the county and I guess the cities too would be then obligated to use the court to make well, it available? Yeah, they should be obligated at that point to make it available. Uh, actually, we did not sue or the lawsuit did not include the city. Uh, it just uh, we've never gotten in from the city and uh, except uh, we're going to check into it, check in this or check in that, which uh, to me is a uh, delay tactic. But anyway, that's what they've chosen to do. The uh, county should, uh, county clerk should put us back on the uh, table with the other two newspapers, um, but I don't know whether uh, they have to or not. I would think court order uh, recognizing us, recognizing the reader uh, as a paper general circulation uh, should be the end of it, but we'll see. And with that, what's in the paper today? What What is in the, the paper that people are picking up and when they open the reader today on this Friday, and it is a beautiful debate. Just as printed in the uh, hard copy, uh, you can also, uh, if you, I think you have to have one of those new or fancy phones. I don't think you can do it on one of them older ones, so I, I probably should be using. But anyway, uh, you can pick us up off of your telephone also. So it's uh, it's kind of level. It's leveled it, and it's given smaller newspapers what has happened. Larger ones uh, sort of price themselves out of the market. They lose. They are losing readership uh, because there's a thousand ways to get information today. Yeah. And what it has done, they uh, have um, sort of uh, left the, the original idea of what they were supposed to be—a hometown community paper. Uh, then they're no longer doing that. So it has opened it up for papers like us to start uh, to become the, the local papers, and uh, that's good for, for the smaller smaller uh, publishers. But uh, we're we're happy that we're able to to compete, and we have uh, I think we have a real good following, and we deal in the truth. I know there are often times that uh, uh, publications like us, especially us, uh, we're referred to as bigots and whatever else uh, they can think of. But what is hateful, and as a matter of fact, that's another word that's used by some people, that we're a hateful, a hate speech publication. But what's hateful about the truth? You know, the people just... Uh, you know, they today a lot. 
lot of people, they're not, they don't fear God, but they fear the truth. And that's, uh, I think, that's a, a sad state of affairs at this point. Well, in, in that, in like you mentioned, technology changing. Yeah. Used to, when you had the local radio or, or the local TV stations, they would put stuff like this on the air. And now it's left up to others to fill that void such as this. Yeah. Um, and I had a blog talk radio show, and a couple times I had talked to, I have interviewed different politicians running for office around here, and you go to the site there, you can find them. But five in 10,000 people will listen now to record it. So they've downloaded yeah. it and listened to their car. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing the number of viewers that use technology and, and with yes. the phone here, I've gone to the Rutherford Reader and picked up something, a, yeah. a score for a game or something else that's going on. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's I think it's good. Okay. Uh, it it also uh, doing stuff like you're doing and and others are providing and putting out whether it be local information or opinions or whatever. I think it's good because. It, on the other hand, it makes uh, the newspapers and radio uh, stations or TV stations, it uh, makes us look for better ways to communicate with the reader and to give them what they're looking for. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, a full page uh, commentary on something people probably don't have or don't want to take the time to read all of that. But if you shorten it and uh, and get to the point, tell the truth about what you're talking about and sharing, then I think that uh, I think it's great that people like you and uh, Ken and Gary that are uh, making this stuff available. And I, I never thought I'd be sitting on a park bench talking into a telephone. Uh, I know we talked about that before. Yeah, I I still like the idea of a camera and a good other things, but yeah, I've looked at it. I think Ken wants to jump in and ask a question. No, I, I wasn't jumping in. I was just agreeing that it's a great thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I do think that accountability, and I think that's kind of what a local paper or like a local podcast like this yeah. holds people accountable. Well, I, I think it does too. I think that uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, power and money uh, makes a different person out of people that uh, are appointed or elected or whatever. And you think that prior to them being elected that, uh, man, I've got to support him or her because, you know, uh, they, they deal in the truth. I know that they're going to do things right, maybe not everything to suit me. But then once they get in there uh, and have a little power, then you find out what the, uh, what the real person happens to be. And, you know, that's what I've been finding out since we've been trying to uh, uh, be part of the public notice uh, group. Well, and, and on those lines, how do you decide the content of the paper? Well, you have to uh, you, you have to have a feel for your for your market, and uh, it's when when, there's a, when the paper's free and it's being picked up uh, from a stand, uh, you're not uh, really sure uh, what the demographics are, and you could say, well, I think for well, one competitor might say, well, there's nothing but rednecks that uh, like that particular paper and older people, and uh, we, you know, uh, target the younger ones. Well, you know, I know that we have people in their 20s, and we have people in their 70s and 80s and however old. And mid-40s reading. And mid-40s reading. <laughs> which I think is, you know, speaking of the mid-40s, 40 range, 30s. 40s. I think it's good uh, that uh, there are people such as yourself that uh, still like to hold what they're uh, consuming as far as uh, 
uh, news and pictures, etc. And plus, you can do it in, in your leisure. You can read uh, the front page here with a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, come home at night and finish reading if you like. Uh, anything that's happening uh, that's an emergency or someplace just bombed another place, uh, you're going to get that news. That we're not going to have it anyway. None, none of the papers that you bought that morning or picked up are going to have it. So that part of uh, your daily information is covered by you know by those things. So you you know you want to know what uh, is happening locally. Uh, you may not be interested in, in uh, being party to uh, the circuit that uh, raises money and stand around for photos with a drink in your hand. Uh, you might uh, be uh, at a parent-teacher meeting or you might be at a little league meeting, but you would like to. See Either be mentioned or seeing that once in a while, or at least knowing that uh, there is a publication uh, in the area that will run that type of stuff. Well, on that note, after the commercial for last week for this week's show, yeah. I know we were sitting right around here, and a lady walked by that you had her family picture in black and white. Yeah. I'm not usernames, so I've never got clear yeah. all that. But you're right, you are showing the history of the county and giving that information out and helping people with gene genealogy. Yeah. And what a thing that most, and it is interesting here to remember where we've come from. Sure. Um, because both of us have moved here from somewhere else. Correct. Um, so it's neat learning about the, the local history. Well, I think local history, no matter where you live, uh, is very interesting. I know that when we went to uh, Bishop, California, and were running the papers there in Mammoth Lakes, is that uh, there was a lot of history in that valley also, which is across the country. And we started, uh, I started with the help of uh, a lady by the name of Jane Fisher, who had been there all of her life, and she knew the history of that valley. And uh, she and another woman and I had coffee at somebody's table, kitchen table, one morning. And we decided that uh, we would uh, put a publication together for the one. It was called uh, Times and Tales of Inyo and Mono Counties. And so we started that. That became real popular. And uh, we had uh, uh, subscribers all over the state and, and beyond. And so, but there are publications like that that are available around here and I think that's really important and like that was talking about that was uh, if you happen to see that picture uh, there there was a ton of family members that were meeting uh, matter of fact I think they're meeting tomorrow August the 30th and uh, I think that's great and uh, who knows? It might be somebody that grew up with them that uh, didn't realize that they were going to do it tomorrow. They might want to stop by and see whoever they went to school with or live next the next farm over. <laughs> now, real quick, since you can read the reader online as well, yeah. I don't know if you have a tracking, or do you have more or equal, or is it, is it growing with interest online as well? Yeah, actually it is. Uh, you know, when we first started, and, and there were advertisements and different people wanting to know, well, you know, how many hits do you have and how many eyeballs and what have you. Uh, I just settled in on, I'd like to know how many people go to the website itself. And so for the first two quarters of this year, uh, we have averaged right at 88,000 people that went to our website per month. And to me, I, you know, that might not be very good uh, as far as the industry is concerned, but I'm delighted because uh, one thing that I do know that uh, it, all, all of those visits are not from Rutherford County. They're, they're beyond. I know people in California, uh, Washington State, 
Kentucky, Indiana that uh, read it on a regular basis on our website. So it, it's gained a lot of uh, popularity there. We, we talked a little bit about the growth in Eagleville yeah. a few minutes ago, and mostly about the, the streets. Yeah. I guess that's a sign of any uh, growth for any community. I remember when we moved from Prescott, Arizona to Washington, D.C. area, right. Springfield, Washington, D.C. had just gone through a huge team it must be because repaving program yeah within about six months after they were done they noticed they had to fix all the water lines and that stuff so right. they dug up the street dug it up. Um, <laughs> but it had if it had been some of the worst roads in the country for years uh, I, I would uh, I don't remember exactly but over a year or two of, of repaving the streets yeah. and then within six months of having nice streets the winter didn't get there before the backhoes did With the growth of the uh, of Eagleville, is, are there more people out there picking up the paper? Have you seen the difference? Interest coming back? Actually, yes. Yeah. And matter of fact, uh, in uh, Apple Hill, I was surprised that uh, there's many people that do pick up the reader out there. And uh, the uh, Rex's Foodland uh, grocery store. There, we have uh, a rack in each door, at each end of the uh, entrance there, and the uh, Chris, the owner, is uh, his family owns it, but uh, he loves the reader and he encourages uh, his uh, customers to, to pick it up. Uh, and at one time, and, and he still does. It, drop them there. Uh, the previous week's uh, papers that I pick up and uh, maybe some extras, uh, I give them to him and he has the uh, people that register that are bagging and checking the groceries out, uh, put them in the bag. And I never asked that. That was his idea. So I thought that was you know, pretty nice. That is great. And uh, when, when you have situations like that, uh, you want to do more for the communities that you're uh, you're in, and so you know I'm thinking about ways to to include them, and, and perhaps it'd be a good idea to uh, pick up their uh, some of their football information this season, uh, as well as Eagle. Now the uh, the daily paper here does a great job on the local high schools and stuff. They have you know, they have the staff to do that and the system to do that. We don't. So a Friday night football game next Thursday, uh, putting the score in is kind of a uh, waste of space. Uh, but we can focus on one kid or uh, one incident or something the coach said or whatever, which is not picked up in the other papers. So we do, do look for ways that we don't just pick up something that will try to duplicate what the other publications do. We want to take a different angle. I know that when I'm out there, at the, after I take the children to school because of the Rockville, get my play against the Rockville school zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I'll sit out there and have a biscuit or coffee with some of the guys yeah. out there at the grocery in Eagleville. Yeah. And they'll pick it up or it's, there's a lot of things going on there that are very surprising. Well, it is. Matter of fact, I've, uh, I was told just yesterday morning that if there was a certain thing that we would do, which I'm not going to share that right this minute. Can we have but, breaking news on this at a different yeah, this time? We'll get, a, breaking, we'll get some yeah, scrolling. Breaking thing. news. But anyway, I was told just yesterday morning that there was a certain thing that we would start doing that uh, there's a bunch of people that would really like that and probably just for that one uh, item, uh, they would probably drop uh, another publication because uh, that's, 
I mean, it's funny because, you know, with newspapers, I've always had the opinion that uh, your uh, subscriber or local people that uh, use your product, they always have a love-hate relationship with them. And so uh, it, it's like Listerine, you know, you use it once a day, but uh, they don't like it, but they do use it once a day, you know. But the thing is, um, with with that, is that, you know, people come and go. They get mad at you because you print something, they don't pick the paper up. Then they, uh, a few weeks later, uh, somebody tells them about something that was in that particular product, and then they go, yeah, you used to pick it up, and, and then they start picking it up again. So it's, uh, it, it's kind of interesting uh, what people want to see, and like that comment yesterday, uh, we have to really take a serious look at it. And nothing that's major that we have to do about it. Uh, it's just something that I haven't thought about. But you have, you have to listen and, and understand what these people want. You can't give everybody everything they want, but uh, there are certain things. You know, people, uh, I know over the years, people will pick up the paper for a paper for sports. They'll pick it up for classified ads. They'll pick it up for Ann Landers or whatever. And that might be all they, you know, read. Or the funny things. Or the, the, the comics, yeah. And I'm and, not quite old enough, but I've heard about this. Some people I've heard pick it up to see if they're still alive or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm beginning to do that myself. <laughs> I might wait till next year or two before I get in there. Yeah. But I wish that one. I might procrastinate that as long as yeah, I Yeah, I never thought about it when I was your age. But along those lines, uh, when you look at large organizations, my wife and I were talking about this last night, as a matter of fact, sometimes you get into a large organization and it's unwieldy. They can't, for, for certain reasons, they can't just change on a dime. They're not nimble anymore. Right. Now, if they have enough, if there's if somebody high enough in the organization says make it happen, that's different. But as far as getting information, like what you said, if, if people want you to change, you could probably do that easier right. than a large organization. So there's good and bad with growth. Well, yeah, I you know I just ask uh, Kay and uh, son Jay, what do you think? And if I get one of them to agree with me, then got a majority, huh? we change on dime. <laughs> uh, you know, the the current format that you know we've gone from a tabloid size to a broadsheet looked more like a, a newspaper. Uh, we we were and have been a newspaper, but people, you know, the perception yeah, is it looks more like a paper. Well, we didn't make a, a big deal and promise uh, you're going to love this and we're going to be able to do that and so forth and change. We just did it. And I think I've had one person uh, ask why we changed. That person was asking for a friend view. And so I think that, as a matter of fact, I know we've gotten an awful lot of comments that they like the format. Nothing's the content has change. We still you know, do basically the same thing that we've done since uh, day one, but it just looks different. And sometimes I think you have to you do a slight change, but I don't think you have to uh, have the Salvation Army band uh, on the street corner to announce it. You know, you just, yeah. you just do it. Well, do you have anything before we start wrapping up the show that the viewers can look forward to any breaking news or, or something that may come out in the reader or upcoming stories that uh, because they know we're going to be able to it, it is interesting we've done this show on this hangout yeah. off and on and last week I've talked to a handful of people that said oh we were searching different things and the reader came up because of um, I don't know I guess Ken knows more about this stuff the uh, searches. Is there a thing that we can we can share with people today? Well, one thing that we're looking at, okay, uh, we have had 
a lot. Now, you know, a lot to me might be 100 people, and a lot to you is 1,000 people. But we've had a lot of uh, people requesting home delivery. And we're not really in a uh, position to, or haven't been in a position to do that, but we're looking, we're looking into it. And uh, we're, we're breaking the county up into various zones, and we're going to, and this is for subscription home delivery, not to drive by and sling it in your yard or under your car or whatever, although that can happen. To subscribe to it, but anyway, uh, that's one thing that we're looking into, and uh, I would think that we're probably going to test the waters here before the end of the year. You heard it here first. That's a big time change. Actually, it actually it is, and it's uh, just not something that you shoot, you know, from the hip to right. do. You really got to sit down and. and plan how you're going to attack this thing uh, in case it really takes off, which you hope it does, but uh, you know, it's not easy. I know that when we first uh, started, and we were printing 10,000 piece, and then we were just throwing them in yards like some others do, um, to sit in the garage or the living room and uh, fold and bag 10,000 pieces. It took a number of people to do, and then everybody takes off in different directions, and it was still, that was a big, a big job, and so I think it was during the summer one year, uh, one of my sons was uh, driving, and I was throwing, or vice versa, and it was hot, I mean hot, and I looked at him, and he, I guess he was thinking the same thing, I said, I think this or next week will be the last time we're going to do this. So at that point, uh, we started putting racks out, and uh, uh, I think it's good because you know you never know when somebody doesn't want the paper, and you throw it in their yard, and the ones that do call and ask you or tell you not to throw your trash in their yard, uh, how many more feel the same way but yet never took the time to call? So I thought, uh, you know, it would be a lot better if, if they want the paper, they know where to go pick it up, and that's that's been a uh, one of the best things that we've done so far. Well, last thing before I know you probably need to go, and, and Gary is going to have some local sports and stuff that he's uh, sure. found from the paper. Can you name off a couple of locations? I'll throw in Sewell's grocery in Eagleville, and you yeah. mentioned the one in Chapel Hill. Are there places in Christiana and Murfreesboro and, and maybe up towards the VA that people can pick up the, the reader? Uh, yeah. Uh, right behind where we're sitting, uh, City Cafe uh, is uh, a good spot. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of the VA, we were in the VA uh, for about nine years, and I mean, we were probably getting rid of two to three hundred papers a week in there, and we had a little rack that you go into the emergency room uh, information area, and uh, we had uh, actually, speaking of the truth, there was a Muslim woman that went in and complained about our paper. It was a hate speech publication. And uh, the administrator out there, Juan Morales, decided to throw us out. And uh, that created a lot of uh, complaints from uh, veterans. And I mean, people that come from Chattanooga or wherever, to, uh, when they come here, they like to read. But they decided to uh, throw us out. I guess that was being politically uh, correct. And I happen to be a, a veteran, but that didn't make any difference when I talked to him. Uh, so anyway, these things happen. But you can find the, the reader uh, throughout the county. Uh, you can find uh, we have a pretty good following over in Woodbury, uh, Eagleville, uh, 
beginning tomb in Chapel Hill, uh, Shelbyville, a little bit in Manchester, Tullahoma, but then we only do that to, to circle Shelbyville back to Woodbury and back in Murfreesboro. But uh, with people wanting it, uh, deliver, want to subscribe to it now, uh, is will be is a different stage of uh, about. 14 years that we've completed, and we're into our 15th year. So uh, the the people like the paper. It's uh, people around here that make the decisions for the rest of us. I think they're the ones that dislike the paper, and I think they're the ones that fear the truth. Well, I appreciate your time this morning. John, I enjoyed it. And maybe we'll have lunch over at the gondolier in a little bit. Okay, well, I hope we didn't talk too much. <laughs> no, I don't think so at all. Right? Uh, I think it's a lot of good information. And I do appreciate you showing the paper's position, which happens to be yours as well. But to the viewers, how things can work when someone says, we don't want this here because of an opinion. But like you say, there's others that if they would speak up. Yeah. They may get it back, uh, True. but anyway, it doesn't change the truth, no, it doesn't. whether the paper is there or um, just because, well, the whole different show, but the truth is what it is, as yeah, they say. It sure is. So I'm going to uh, take over this part, and then we'll turn it over to Gary in a few minutes. Okay. Thank right. you very Thank much. You Enjoy. Enjoy. So take, have a good weekend. You too. All right. uh, this has been a segment with... Keith Dowdy with the Rutherford Reader, and the information he's provided is also available. You can watch this again, but you can look at his paper, and the people that want the information is out there for you. And there's a lot of good information in the paper, and for advertisers, what a great way to get your information that you need someone that they, they want to have your service or hire you. It's a great publication in circulation to have it in there. And here in a second, Gary Washer will be joining us, and he will be giving some local information for sports and stuff. And then Gary and Ken will end up closing out the show. And I'll let Ken, uh, Gary scoot over a little more, and he can do this, and he can close out the show. Basically, what I'm going to be talking about is the schedule for tonight. It's going to be a great night for high school football. It's going to be 82 degrees and a little bit uh, partly cloudy. Uh, but just to give you an update, uh, football started last week, so we'll give it a little bit of record. Uh, Blackman, who is 1-0, is hosting Brentwood tonight. And for those of you who may be more into the band, uh, Blackman is one of those bands that uh, tends to do a lot of flashy shows, so that's a good one to go see. Uh, Oakland, who is 0-1 right now, is hosting White Station tonight. Um, Riverdale, who's 1-0, will be hosting Bradley Central. Uh, Siegel, who's 0-1, will be hosting Udawa. Also, if you're uh, into the band instead of the football, that's another uh, good one to see. Usually they have some outrageous things that they have going on. Uh, Smyrna, who is 1-0, will be at Cane Ridge tonight. Uh, Laverne, who is 0-1, will be at Wilson Central tonight. And Stewart's Creek, who is 0-1, who will, they will be hosting Tullahoma. Uh, so that is the Rutherford County High School football schedule for tonight. And we'll keep you updated on that as things go. And uh, we look forward to having you on further weeks as we have different guests and different things coming up, like uh, we'll be having in the near future Rodney Bryson talking about networking. And uh, another topic that he'll be talking about in the near future will be on um, uh, identity theft. So we have a lot of good shows coming up and even uh, and even uh, shows on uh, about credit card processing. So a lot of fantastic things coming up in the near future. So we hope to see you then. With that, we will see you next Friday. Okay, great show, guys. Uh, we're still live. Uh, I wanted to mention... I've got a special guest coming up, too, probably in two or three weeks. She's not quite ready, uh, but maybe we'll give you some hints as we go along. Anyway, uh, Gary, is there anything else, or do we end up just going to shut it down? Uh, I think that's it for today, unless John has anything. Let's wrap it okay. up. See you all later. Bye-bye. All right. Here, bye.